profound sadness that I share, again, some devastating news with all of you tonight. Shortly after 6 p.m. tonight, two newly appointed Chicago police officers, Officer Conrad Gary with 18 months on the job, and Officer Eduardo Marmalejo, also a two-year veteran, responded to a shot spotter notification of gunshots in the area of 101st and Dauphine. By doing the most dangerous thing any police officer can do, and that is to chase an individual with a gun, these brave young men were consumed with identifying a potential threat to their community and put the safety of others above their own. During their investigation, both officers were struck by a passing metro train and died instantly. This has been an immensely difficult year for the Chicago Police Department, and especially for the men and women of the 5th District, where they have faced tragedy after tragedy this year. I'm asking all of you, Chicago, to pray for the families of these two heroic young men, and please say a prayer for the men and women of the 5th District, who even tonight will still stop at nothing to safeguard their community. With that, I'd like to ask Mayor Rahm Emanuel to say a few words. Thank you, uh, Superintendent. I also want to thank uh, Alderman Beal, whose uh, area is represented by the 5th District. I want to echo the words of the superintendent. You have two young officers, young families. This is a loss of life, a sense of grief. Not one usually for a loss of words, but I think you can understand the idea trying to express the immense sense of devastation. The Chicago Police Department, when you think of this year, Commander Bauer, recently Officer Jimenez, these two young officers, I hope that's a reminder to all of us. There they were, responding, to shot spotter, doing their job, trying to protect the rest of us. Lost two young men, both fathers, young families. This holiday will never be the same. Those two families. While our hearts are with them, we lost people who answered the call to be made Chicago a better place. We all go about our lives not thinking twice. And we do that because of the men and women of the Chicago Police Department. This, I think it goes without saying, is going to be a difficult period of time for the Chicago Police Department family. We as a city have to measure up and remind them that they're part of our family. I will tell you, having talked to one of the family members with the superintendent, there are no words that can express the grief, the sense of loss, just knocks you back on your heels. We go about our time with our families. Let us remind ourselves that there are others who cannot. I think it's really important that we put our arms around the Chicago Police Department and hold them up and support them at this critical juncture we are so dependent on their professionalism and their sense of duty. Then, Once again, we're here tonight um, to notice the loss of two of the members of the Fraternal Order of Police. They came to work tonight doing exactly what they were hired to do, 
doing exactly what they were dedicated to do to protect the people of the city of Chicago. They put their lives ahead of the rest of us. And unfortunately, uh, they lost their lives tonight. The police department and the Fraternal Order of Police uh, is a sadder place today because of their loss. Um, the officers had young children, and we will be there for them. We are going to miss them, particularly at this holiday season. Thank you. <clears throat> we'll take a few questions. Eduardo Marmalejo, E D U A R D O, last name Marmalejo, M A R M O L E J O, Officer Conrad Gary, C O N R A D, last name Gary, G A R Y. <clears throat> 30, Marmalejo is 37, and um, Gary is 31. And does that look about two years, two and a half to two years? Yeah. Um, Gary had 18 months, and Marmalejo two and a half years. And are they partners? They were partners tonight. I'm not sure if they were regular partners or not. So can we ask you if you can give us any insight into it? When you received the phone call and found out that two of your officers had been killed, what, what did you say? What went through your mind? Shock. I mean, just here we are again. Um, <clears throat> and it just highlights again how dangerous this job can be. You know, I often say that the most dangerous thing a police officer can do is take a, a weapon off, an, off of an armed individual. And that's what they were doing, you know, with no regard for their own safety. So it's shock, dismay. Um, you know, then you start thinking as superintendent, you know, are they married? Do they have children? All those things go through your mind, you know, and, and it's just <coughs> difficult. You know, this, this isn't easy. You know, and, and, you know, the mayor and I spoke to family members. It's not easy. It, it's just not. That's the human part of this job. Did you not again? Well, unfortunately, um, we swear that oath, put on that uniform, we know that's a possibility. You don't look forward to it, but you always know that's their po that's that Well, we've already dispatched chaplains, uh, EAP, employee assistance, over to the 5th District. And, and again, please, just, just keep in mind, the 5th District has, has had to uh, deal with tragedy after tragedy this year, you know, including officer suicides. And, you know, you start to wonder to yourself, how much can they take? But I will tell you this, though. The resolve of Chicago police officers always amazes me because I guarantee you, we're going to have EAP over there and the chaplains to talk to that midnight roll call. But you know what they're going to do? They're going to strap up, put their uniforms on, and go out there again tonight to keep this city safe. So as much as this hurts, I'm still immensely proud of them that they can continue on. They'll be hurting, but they'll still do the job that they swore an oath to do. So basically, there was a shot spotter alert to shots fired um, at that address, 101st and Dauphine. Um, the individual made his way up to um, the Metro tracks at 103rd and uh, Cottage Grove. At some point, the two officers who was looking for him were struck by the train. That subject was ultimately taken in custody and a uh, weapon recovered. So, but it's still in the preliminary stages. So we'll put out more information as we get it. Do we know who he was firing at, Superintendent? No, not at this point. And was the train just going so fast? Yeah, you know, those trains, there was no stop at that location. So the train was probably going somewhere between 60 and 70 miles an hour. Thanks, guys. Thank you all.